I'd been working as teacher in England for five years and was quite frustrated with the uh, paperwork and the politics and education in England and wanted to get back to the reason I got into teaching in the first place which was to work with children and make their education better. I didn't think I would come to Thailand because I never thought of Southeast Asia so it was a kind of um, unexpected uh, decision really and it was the placement itself that appealed to me. I, I knew very, I'd never been to Southeast Asia, I knew very little about it. The VSO had a brand to me, uh, it stood for something and that from the selection process just meeting old volunteers who were talking about their days, it just built on that image for me. My placement is here in Massat in, on the Thai-Burma border um, and my placement was to do some inclusive education training um, to enable children with special needs to go into mainstream school. However, <laughs> that didn't happen because we discovered that um, a lot of the children with special needs were not in school at all. In fact, they were like, tucked away in their houses, um, really not having very much contact with outside folks other than their family. Um, so this is why it was decided that we would open a special educational needs centre. My role is Migrant Education Advisor based in Samut Sakhon, which is about an hour away from Bangkok. There's a big migrant community here, lots of fishing factories because we're near the fishing port. So lots of migrants come in from Burma. They found that lots of the children who were coming with the parents weren't attending school at all. So they've set up a learning centre for Burmese children to try and integrate them into the Thai state system. My role is to support the teachers on developing their uh, standards of education, to work on curriculum development, classroom management and making a more structured environment for the learning to take place in. I've been writing learning materials. Uh, last year, um, a teacher training course book it was first developed really because teacher training is a, a sort of, it's a, it's a subject and a requirement and particularly now that um, a lot of teachers are resettling, it's leaving the schools with great big gaps actually that they're having to fill quite often with graduates from the, from the post-10 schools that we work with. So uh, increasingly the schools are looking at doing teacher training as part of their, um, you know, what we'd call sixth form kind of learning uh, programme and this is, you know, hopefully going to be helpful in that. The most uh, recent activity I did was about over six or seven months was collecting data uh, for the Ministry of Education. Basically I hired a team of uh, local Burmese to interview students and teachers in every migrant school in this area, which is 61 schools. So we interviewed over 10,000 students and 500 teachers. There's never been any database system on students or teachers. So now we've got a baseline to understand what the real problems are, because before we've only been guessing. Being in the, in the school with the children is, is fantastic. When you do a different kind of activity and, and the learning is more active and you give them the chance to experiment in, in the activities that they're doing, they're so responsive and they're so positive that it's just fantastic to see them engaged and interested in, in the learning. Um, pace of things is a lot slower than, than back at home, particularly with work, and I think uh, that's still something that I'm trying to get used to, uh, working at a different pace and not expecting people to adjust to me, that I'm working in their culture. I have to get used to working in their sort of framework. I think it's fantastic working with the teachers here, you know, we, we work with the teachers both in the migrant schools and also in the refugee camps and given how straightened their circumstances are, you know, in terms of resources and things like that, their kind of passion and commitment for the youngsters and their choices in difficult circumstances, you know, life choices, um, is inspiring, you know, it, it really is. The change has been astronomical in all the children mainly because they started from nowhere really they would had no education not a lot of stimulus no contact with people so when they came here they were just ready to blossom and that's what they did 
just to be able to work here, I think, is quite a privilege. Massot is a really interesting place. It is a true border town. We're right on the border with Burma here. And of course, we work with Burmese people rather than with the Thai people. And it is, uh, it's everything that you expect of a border town. It's, it's bustling, it's busy, and it's a good place to live, really. In an ideal world, people coming here would be able to speak three languages in addition to their own, which would be Burmese, Thai and Karen at least. Um, and I speak none of these particularly well. Um, but uh, it is interesting how much kinds of English as a global language is actually part of, part of the reality even here, you know. So I have to say I get away with um, English most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> I have a motorbike, <laughs> which is great, I love it. <laughs> um, and uh, I had some training in England before I came, and which was brilliant. I'm cycling for the first time in 20 years, which is interesting. Uh, but it's, and I don't get my bicycle stolen, whereas I used to in London, so that's a different aspect. But you know, the social as atmosphere is brilliant. You go around people's houses and you just relax and chill. We have another volunteer and I set up a movie night because there's no big cinema here. So we get a projector, somebody's wall, and we watch a movie and eat popcorn and occasionally maybe a glass of this or that. Um, but it, it's very sociable. You, if you want to be on your own, you can. If you want to be in a big group, you can. If you want to mix with the community, you can. You, it, it's literally the right size to do anything you want. And I'm a city boy, I've never moved out of a city all my life, whichever country in the world it's been. So this is a new change for me and I'm, yeah, I, I, how to say it, it, there's something for everybody here, it really is. I'd like to say that by the end of the placement, uh, I could leave and the teachers would feel confident to use things like lesson plans and plan more active learning for the children. And if I could see even one teacher do that, then I would feel that I'd achieved something in the placement and, and that would be really rewarding. So I think it's about having realistic expectations about what you can achieve in a short space of time and just accepting that things won't always run smoothly and just being able to adapt to that and make small changes and feel the difference that you're making in those small ways. I have learned an awful lot about the situation here, which I don't think that the rest of the world have, know a lot about. I don't know why. It just doesn't seem to have as big a profile as some other problem areas in the world. But um, it is a very complicated and complex uh, area to work in, and it's so interesting. So I've learned a lot about the sort of cultural differences, um, about the different uh, ethnic groups that live along the border and um, all the, the problems that they have in living in Burma. After all, that's why our children are here, because they are, they are displaced people from Burma. You know, they can't live at home because there's nothing there for them. So th that's why they live here. And that has been very humbling, I think, to work with people like, like I do, that um, have nothing, they have nothing. If they don't work, they don't eat. You know, it's very, very basic, the kind of life that they, that they lead. And I feel privileged because when they come here, you know, the, the parents come all the time to join in what we're doing. And they are just so lovely and, and so appreciative, I think, of what we do. But of course, the biggest change is with the children and they've just been wonderful to work with and it's been my privilege and an honor. You know, we're in places with lots of other people with lots of different backgrounds and experience and you can't get that sitting in your chair in your office back wherever you live and uh, most of my friends are extremely jealous, so yeah, get, get on the plane. <laughs> I would say that the support that VSO provides and the support that you get from other volunteers is, is invaluable. I think you, you set up another network. It's, like you develop another family in a way and they're people that you can go to for support, shoulders to cry on, somebody to laugh with and it's just fantastic that you can be away from home and you can have that much support. This is Zaza An 
And he was one of our biggest challenges when he first came to the centre because he's somewhere on this sort of um, autistic spectrum disorder and it also has quite a few obsessions um, which he follows assiduously every day. But it was his behaviour that was... Uh, that's one of your obsessions, isn't it? Yeah, no mask. Oh. Mashibu. Mashibu. Um, when he first came, he, he worried the teachers no end because they couldn't, they had no control over him at all. He Ballon. just didn't. Ballon. <laughs> Ballon. Tie. Because his, he, they couldn't do, they, couldn't, they wouldn't do anything that, that, that they asked of him. He used to run around hitting people, throwing things, kicking the ball, running out here, trying to get through the gate. He had one word, which was, ma. Just like that. Oh, yes. And now he can say one, two, three. One, one two, two, three, three four, five. Five. Ooh. And he can say mingalaba. 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 And he can say zaza an. Ah. And we set about trying to make him a happier boy. And the teachers, happier people to have him. Zaza Ang. 